Today's guest is uh, a friend of mine from our time on the Opie and Anthony show and uh, Opie and Jim Norton as well, sorry. Um, he is a comedian. He's one of the hosts of the History Hyenas podcast. It's uh, my friend and what is not an ally called? Oh, and nemesis, Mr. Chris DeStefano. Oh, my God died, and then I call. Yeah, yeah. God, it's so sad, huh? Yeah, call was a beautiful was, guy. What he's happened? A great to him? guy. Was it drugs? You think? I think drugs didn't help him and Shira. I, but I think it was just eating. You know, I personally think that, <clears throat> just my opinion, mm -hmm. that that he was really fucking sad and devastated when his wife divorced him. Oh, his wife left him. That blonde his wife left him. Yeah, wow. she cheated on him no. with a bus boy. Yeah. And he found out, and then oh. he moved to a cabin in the woods and was like, hey, I cut her a check for whatever, 200K. She's out of my life. Fuck it. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I live in the woods now. Every day was like shot of whiskey and, you know, fucked Firewood. up food. Firewood, yeah. No, no, not even that. Like, he would be like, yo, I eat McDonald's all day, every day. In the woods? Oh, yeah, he would just, and he would always post Ruizing, R-U-I-Z-I-N-G, Ruizing. And so, but the food was crazy. Like, the worst shit, you, you know, Big Mac with a devil dog with syrup on it and would eat it and it was like right. ruizing and people start tweeting at him ruizing ruizing and then he just didn't wake up one day. But I think you know when you're for, in your mid forties you start doing stuff like that. Anybody is is apt to have a heart attack. Yeah, it's dangerous because it's like you know that's a, and he's a chef too. We're talking about Carl Ruiz. Yeah, Carl Ru Ruiz or Ruiz. Yeah, and there's shit. Yeah, R U I Z. Everybody's seen that type of name, but. And also, yeah, you never kind of know how it is. Ruiz. 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 Well, I'm from, they say Ruiz. Ruiz. The Mad Cuban. Yeah, the Mad Cuban. And he, dude, that's got to be your worst nightmare. You are mm. a chef. Right. And your wife leaves you with a busboy. That's, that's the rumor. I don't know if that is actually how it happened. That's what we were told. That's what he said on you know when we used to do opie and all that but it's a story of the it's just a, it's such a greek tragedy almost you're in the back of the kitchen right you're doing it you're doing a lamb chop you're doing a scallion right you know right you're doing the work right then you got this little milly freaking vanilla guy out here run, right filling waters and freaking offering extra butter and he might have been another ruiz too most chances are a bus boy working at a restaurant in new jersey's last name is also ruiz so it's all in the family it's kind of whack because he raised her kids like they were his own. Wow. Because those weren't his biological children, but they called him dad and everything like that. Mm. And he just left, man. And then he had just opened up this beautiful brand spanking ass new restaurant, I believe in Midtown. And then he fucking died like a month into it. And was the restaurant still going? Hell, yeah. The, I, I think the restaurant is closed now because he's gone. Mm. Or maybe it, or maybe it changed. Something changed about the restaurant now. But yeah, he was... Um, it was such a shocking thing when he died. Carl Ruiz. His breath always stunk, though, so I always wondered if there was something <laughs> rotting in inside him. Oh, rotting in he Carl Ruiz. He always had stinky breath. And that's no disrespect. I'm not disrespecting the dead. You know, I, would, I wouldn't do that. But I'm saying, I used to say, like, his breath always smelled like hot ass. And I'm just wondering if that, if there was something always going on, like a hole or something. It seemed like he kind of took, like, did one of those um, Zen dip packs yeah and never took it out he never took it out yeah like he got a what is that thing that women get if they leave a tampon in for too long um like a toxic toxic it like he, shock it, syndrome it seemed like he had toxic shock syndrome from a zen dip it smelled like one of his tonsils was dead and the other one was alive yeah like just it wasn't all the way horrid but something there was some part of him of his of his mouth like a dead tooth or a dead tonsil, something or food stuck, but something was always stank. And the living one had hid the dead one and was telling the cops he didn't know what happened to exactly. it. Exactly. The living one killed the dead one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's true. But, you know, R.I.P. to Carl, because I love him and I always will. Yeah, R.I.P. Carl Ruiz. Yeah. Or Ruiz. Ruiz. Yeah, Carl. I just call, we call him the Mad Cuban. Yeah. Yeah, the Mad Cuban. And, and, that, and that's when you and I met, dude. I was going to say, he's connected, he's connected to, to us in a big way. R.I.P. Carl, man. R.I.P. Carl, man. Man, R. R. man R. he R. had Carl. such a big heart, man. He has such a, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, or he didn't. I don't know what happened to him, they said. But. Well, because if he died that early, he probably had a little heart. 
Yeah. But he had a big soul. Small hearted. Small hearted, yeah. <laughs> Small hearted. And we got uh we got Nick Davis and uh Dom DePettis here too. Yeah, Don DePetta, everybody. They didn't we didn't have enough time to get him on camera. Yeah. He's fine as fuck too. He's on camera. We can see him. Go oh, pro. Go pro, not high kid. def or anything. But. Nick, you're cute too. Thanks, buddy. You really are. You're one of those rare guys that can pull off bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he is kind of huh? He's got nice bangs, man. Dude, you guys were just, uh, you and Don were just in um, Cleveland, right? Right. Cleveland at Hilarity's Comedy Club. Thank you. The last time I went through there, I sold like 500 seats, which for me, that was good. But this time, the whole weekend, 1,500 out of 1,600. So for me, wow. that's like a new ball field. And I was telling them, telling you before the show, it all started when I came on your podcast last January, got the ball really? rolling. But you and Bert, when I did you guys back to back in the same week, I will never forget. I had, I was just telling Don this. I had 99,000 followers on Monday, like when I came back, you know, it came through the weekend. Then you and Bert released in the same week. By Friday of that week, I had 139,000. Wow. So now followers, who cares about the followers? It's not about the vanity of it. It's about that gave, you guys gave me a real opportunity to gain your fans and give me the opportunity for me to perform for them. And then they stuck around. And they're yeah. still buying. And now they're fans of my podcast, The History of Hyenas. Because we get it all the time. Because we're like, where would we find you? We always send out little service. And it's always like th this past weekend or Bird Show or there's a Big Pockets in New York, Girls Gotta Eat. Andrew Schultz, and then recently the fighter and the kid mm -hmm. that I did a couple of months ago, all that stuff, it's all the podcasts. Like yeah. it's got nothing to do with television at all anymore. It's just a podcast and what you can, how you can maximize that on the internet. So appreciate it. Yeah, no, man. Well, yeah. look, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that you came and I'm glad you came back, man. You got nice fingers too. Really? I, I know, I know if that's one of those things I've never said to you, but I've been, I've been watching your IG for a long time and I've been friends with you, I think since 2000. 13, 14, and you got some of the nicest fingers in the game and toes. I didn't realize that you're, because you're wearing thong toe sandals right now. So you got toes. Yeah, I am. I'd like to put mustard on your toes and ketchup on your fingers and take a bite out of your hot dog. Is thong toe sandals, is that too much? for? Is that like a woman kind of wearing a thong or what is that like? If is that you too came much? out, if you, I'll be honest with you, if you came to my part of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right, with the thong toe sandals like that, there's a chance, not when you're with me, but there's a chance, like, you know, one of my boys' names, Pat Finnegan, Patty Fly Balls, he would hit you with a taped up wiffle ball bat <laughs> yeah. just because he would think, like, why is this dude coming out with his no socks on? Yeah, so you got a guy, an adult, doing freaking the worst, lamest crime ever, bro? Yeah. <laughs> what else is he yeah. going to do? He would Are you going to rob a bank with a slingshot, dude? <laughs> dude what he, else is he going to do? He used do? to tape quarters and nickels to the end of a tape a wiffle ball bat and then put tape around it and just hit people in the yeah. back of the head with it and you just say Ching! you just get lit up by batty fly balls dude when i was young people used to, if people if if somebody was really upset uh-huh you would go up to him and you'd be like you're mad yeah you would hit your throat and say you're mad, mad. and it would make them so much matter bro of course there's something about that when people you're mad yeah and then you get hit or oh, what about this if you go like that and then they'd look see i've caught you you get punch in the stomach for that yeah if you had that's like an embarrassing thing but they don't do that stuff that's anymore like dangerous youth why it's like white crime it's like white childhood right homoerotic crime i gotta be honest with you though man the neighborhood i grew up in that we did that white homoerotic shit but if you fucked with the albanians mm -hmm. the albanians in my name sand christians they call them sand christians re uh in ridgewood queens ridgewood bushwick area queens brooklyn area bro one time we we're playing ball right somebody elbowed one of the Albanians by accident, kid got pissed off, came back 20 minutes later, 10 deep, okay? Two of the Albanians had chainsaws, active chainsaws, yeah. running on the court with the chainsaws trying to take off fucking limbs. Damn. Yeah, so nobody ever messed with the Albanians in my neighborhood. They had a gang out there, but imagine coming at somebody coming at you with a chainsaw for realsies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude, I used to work, I used to do, um, not logging, but I did yard work. Mm -hmm. for a man and uh <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah you guys obviously never done any actual work yeah, but dude. and i had to work with this mentally challenged dude they called him what was that guy's name hold on they called him tiger cat but i don't remember what his name was right um ronnie yeah, his name was Ronnie. Mm -hmm. And they also called him Go Head Ronnie. Go Head Ronnie, yeah. And he was mentally disabled. Right. Or, yeah, he was mentally disabled. And so one, so they we get one chainsaw between the two of us, right? Okay. And he took it, you know? And so I'm supposed to be kind of the foreman. And he's literally, 
lining up the thing and about to start it and instead of having it on a branch has it lined up on my leg bro what and not even like not like just zoned out like or this is where we start and you got yeah. thick fucking tree trunk legs too the top not the bottom no i know because your leg i've always noticed that i mean you i was always like really thick legs dude absolutely man what? and you never really wore shorts looking at me you got a thick ass yeah I'm yeah a, you do i got a thick ass i got the ass of a D like a kind of like a young black girl with down are you syndrome. in shape are you staying in shape you look in shape but how do you feel yeah i don't feel i feel tired but i do i did go to, i did go to the gym this morning and i'm gonna go again on thursday yeah and man. i'm going to yoga today going to yoga today dude what, what's it like different now that if you when people you're selling tickets like what's that experience like um i would say that now it's it actually, to be honest with you, the last three shows I've done, three weekends I've done, at least one of those four or five shows, I felt like I was going to pass out and almost actively passed out at least one time a weekend because it's this new thing. Donnie was with me in Hilarities last week and I was calling for him about 20 minutes into the set. I was like, you need to be near me because I may faint. I may go down. I don't know what it is. I think it's like this pressure that they know who you are now and you better do well. But the thing that saves me is because of the podcast, the History of Hyena podcast, I'm so honest and open about it is I was talking to the crowd being like, yo, I'm going to go down. Because my podcast partner, Giannis Pappas, who call him Yanni Nets, because he did pass out on stage in Providence. So he's always, always got to have Nets behind him. We're like, yo, this kid oh, yeah, go down. safety. So we call him Yanni Nets. So Throw I was a like, helmet on that dude, bro. I know, man. I was like, I so I'm going to be Chrissy Nets. I was like, I'm Chrissy Nets right now. I may go down. So they were like laughing along with it. But if, if they didn't oh, know who yeah. I was, I would have fully passed out at Hilarities. Yeah. I would have fully passed out. So there's a little bit of a anxiety-inducing thing to it. But then it's also like sometimes too good to be true because the th that's what I'm happy that I'm nowhere near my goal yet, not even close, but I'm happy to be climbing at the pace I'm climbing because I've you know, started out as a, of course, open micer, then would feature on the road, MC on the road, then feature on the road, and then headline, you know, the low D rooms, or even if I got into A rooms, it would be July 4th weekend or some half full weekend, not really getting paid, what I deserved at the time, but not, you know, I wasn't making any real money. And now to start climbing and sell out shows before I get there or sell a lot of tickets, but you it's say a pressure. new thing. Like, what do you mean pressure? Like, you, the pressure? Well, it's easy to perform for people, I think, that don't know who you are. There's no... St you're not letting anybody down. They're, they're going to be let down. They feel like they're going to be let down anyway. They're like got barked in or they got a free flyer to go to a show. Yeah. Whereas opposed to somebody now paid a whatever, 20, 30, sometimes $40 ticket price, Damn. you know, depending on whatever venue you're at. Yeah. You know, you know how it is sometimes. I don't know if you need new shoes or not. It yeah, bro. Like, dude. Listen, man. Yeah, bro. You know, my daughter eats a lot of fucking applesauce. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so it depends on, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, there's pressure in that. There's pressure yeah. to be like, I need to, these people, they have paid money, they got babysitters, I need to do well for them. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I was thinking recently that I felt like a more of a pressure. Um, I liked having the element of surprise a lot. Mm. And it's hard, it's a little tougher to have it when people are coming out, they know, they coming to see you. Right. You know, there's when people don't know how you're gonna be, Yeah. there's an element of, you can, there's an element of surprise. There's an element, there's like a, a there's a mystery you can kind of play with, you know, they don't know you, right. you know, there's like a, I don't know. It's like, it's a real thing. If I don't know who this guy is, then I can be, you know, I, I could be pleasantly surprised. I could be, um, unaware of how, you know, how he's entertaining me sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I could be, you know, his humor could be very unique. Right. Whereas then if people know you, then it's different, you know? Since you've been at the successful level you've been at with the theaters and all that, have you taken a hot, fat fucking bomb yet? Like a hot, like a real fat one. Like just a nice cero in front of, you know, 1,500 plus. Oh. <laughs> just a real stinker. Because it happens, man. Uh -uh. Well, you just take a full cero. <laughs> Somebody goes, that's a no-no. <laughs> and it's just, you're just eating it. And you start going, where are you from? <laughs> or you start going, yo, you know what's weird? <laughs> There's nothing funnier. There's nothing. The only things that can make comedians belly, belly, belly laugh is watching another good comedian bomb mm -hmm. and a fart joke yeah. or a fart or just not even a fart joke, just an actual, just a wet, nasty fucking rip your asshole third gear fart. Like that guy in Barstool. You see that guy in Barstool with the third gear fart? Uh-uh. Yeah, it's something to look up. What fart? Do you think the farts are get nastier in certain countries or not? I think, yeah. Well, I think that's why I think we need a wall is because I think, you know, outside the <laughs> oh, United yeah. States, 
Those farts, man. That's the reason. I, every time Trump's like, we need a wall, I'm like, yeah, Mexicans' assholes are dirty. We get that. Uh, and Canadian asses, too, man. Don't sleep on Canadian. Uh, don't sleep on how disgusting a Canadian fart could be. Really? Poutine? You know yeah. what that's like? That's cheese curd. Yeah. I want a wall around all that because there's a wall around <laughs> us, man. Well, why does it everybody should just get a little wall that they can bring with them <laughs> yeah. and put wherever they want, man. Canada and Mexico, because the truth of the situation- Here we got a man oh, yeah, right yeah, here he, doing something. There's yeah, an ahead. urban this, guy right here. This is the, a, a, ain't ever hear a fart hit third gear is the caption. Okay. Take a look. <laughs> Damn. And they're That's probably gonna, and they're gonna blame it somehow on white people. I'm sure, dude. <laughs> what? That's insane. Yeah, that's insane, right? Wow, dude. Third gear. That's like a Tokyo drift, huh? <laughs> dude, I was watching that thing for an hour yesterday, crying. Damn, like, dude, my beautiful four-year-old daughter was doing ballet and doing some of the finest moves she's ever done and getting to new heights in her life. And I was head buried in the phone, crying, laughing because of this dude's third gear fart. And her mom was like, "This is why we can't be together." Her mom was just, she was like, "This is why." We're just always going to be co parents. Because <laughs> you know, I was just like, yo, crying. She thought I was crying. At first, my kid's mom thought I was crying because of how beautiful my daughter nailed a pirouette. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to that with my headphones on. Yo, know, hysterical <laughs> crying at the ballet. And look at, are they husband and wife, you think? Yes. Or they are. Yo, and he his, just blasted his wife with that. Oh, could you imagine what those undies must look like? <laughs> Yo, his draws must be wild. Dude, I can't even Wet. imagine. So like that would make me cry laughing and watching a good, good, good comedian or a video of myself bombing hard. Yeah. Where like you just can't get like... You're just eating it. Like I just did the Impractical Jokers cruise. Mm -hmm. um, and I How took, was it? I was supposed to be on there. Yeah, it was, it was fun, man. It was fun. See a lot of fat ass people, but um, it was fun. Well, whatever, you know, I'm fat. I got, I'm not, I'm not, I'm in better shape, but I still got fat, puffy nipples. I'm still a size. Now I used to be 38 waist, now I'm a 36. Yeah. So I've slimmed down, but I'm still. Like I wouldn't hit. If you were coworkers, I probably wouldn't hit on you. I wouldn't. Right. If you were female. Well, the thing is like this: is I always feel like it's uh, you know people have said this to me and they're right. Uh, I got lead a man face best friend body. That's what it is. It's a letdown. It's a letdown with women with me. Usually I think it's going to be something else. I think I'm, a, you know, this tough guy's guy, whatever. That I got that look. Some people tell me I look like Ben Affleck. Some people tell me I look like Ben Stiller. It's yeah. a big difference. You look like Ben Better. I know that. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. So I'm sorry, Rob. Yeah, yeah, Ben Better. Yeah. Yeah, dog. Damn, dude. dude you look like look, somebody who's fucking <laughs> using performance enhancing drugs to swim. That's what you look like, dude. dude, you look like Rhea Perlman. <laughs> Do I really? You got Rhea Perlman hair. She's talented. She is talented. Yeah. Bro, Cheers was a good show. Sometimes I feel like CBS is my Cheers because I'm always getting STDs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just always in there like, yo, y'all got me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, Rhea Pearl, no, no. Wow. Like that. Extremely Jewish. Yeah, she's got the, yeah. No, but we said you look like you have the same hair as Eileen Wernos. Oh, yeah. For that, that was an old clip with Carl, <laughs> R.I.P. Carl. We said that you look like Eileen Wernos, the first female serial killer ever killed. You Damn. have that kind of hair going. Yeah. Um, but that's all right. But um, what were we talking about? Oh, we were saying, I was saying that like, yeah, like laughing at, so so you have it. So since you've been things that make me laugh, when I the thing that make me, oh, I have not, bond, no, I haven't. Right. I had a, t this, this, actually this weekend in, uh, this actually about two weeks ago in Maryland, I had a tough show. Right, Maryland. Yeah, and Shout it was out like it was a big place, man. It was twenty five hundred, so it was like one of the biggest places that I've been in to perform. Maybe in the states, the biggest place, right? You moved tickets, brother. But it was crazy, man, and it was amazing. You know, everybody that came out and stuff. But oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> that was a call. I call that a top of the cracker. That came right out of the top of my ass crack. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes a, a fart is really right on deck, and then sometimes it's yeah. very lost, and it's kind of like almost like they have to call it to the front of the line. Like its mom just got there to pick it up at carpool, and it's like, hey, yeah. where's Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, it came out of the top of my ass. So I didn't even mean to time it that way, but it was one of those things where I can't hold it in anymore. It's going to find a way out, and it leaked out of the top. Oh, then, <laughs> then there was a man very similar to that, which is exactly what made the show so tough in Maryland. Just a guy in the front just being just crazy. Yeah, you know? right. Just too much sometimes, you know. Yeah. But um and that stage was really big and the acoustics were like different. And so it was like just it was it was tougher to manage. It was like, okay, I'm having to manage something that's different here. Like, you know, the stage is bigger. So how much do I move on the stage? So I tried right. to move up and down the whole stage yeah. instead of just I, I probably should have just took the middle third and just moved up and down that. How how have you had some 
since you know obviously with these bigger venues had a time where you felt like you were going to pass out even if it's going great 20 minutes into the set 30 minutes into the set overwhelming energy has that happened to you or you always feel in control when you're on stage like it's like your safe zone I felt a lot I, f I feel in control I just feel like um I think I just feel tired I think it's just like okay we're getting through it you know I want everybody to see the show I want everybody to see the tour so it's like you know places keep popping up that we haven't been and so do you bring the same dudes with you yeah yeah bring the same guy most of the time this guy Ari Manis oh great and that's nice it's so important right to have somebody on the road with you to keep your mental health oh he helps me so much because man. if you sit there alone I don't care how successful you are you start to really think about everything and then it starts to real so that's why I like having Don and I got my other boy Sergio Chacon they come out with me yeah he's like a, Ari Manis like a service animal man he's great dude yeah. he like He's always level-headed. He's always the same. Like, if I'm losing my mind or something. Yeah, because you're sober, too, right? He's always the same. Uh, yeah, man. that's why I got Don. Don's a piece of shit. He's, he he oh, yeah. drinks, and he's... Oh, he's, yeah, I've, I've yes, I am. Don. Yeah, yes, Don, I am. Don, 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 but Don is good because Don's always down for a good time. Yeah. Sergio is one, 10 years sober. Wow. Boxing instructor. So when you... You know how when we go on the road, you come back that Monday, and you're like, oh, man, I got to hit the gym. I, I fucked up. With Sergio, you come back like, yo, I could take Monday off. Wow. Because he's got you up at 7 a.m. doing drills, working... So it's good to have him. I like having both guys that's, with me. That's yeah. unfair a little bit. Donnie little and I do bit. work we out. We work out. Donnie does work out. That's right. Don doesn't. I mean, Don, Don's I believe, a sex addict. I believe all of that. I believe that Don works out. He doesn't. I don't believe that he works, that he seems like a guy that works out. Right. Wow. I, yeah, I have. I, I don't have a, you know, some men have like a V. I have an H. It yeah. just goes straight. Yeah. Now nah, you look good with no shirt on. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. No, nice. I believe it, man. Look, a lot of men look good, I think. Um, I'm one of those guys like I just. No matter what. But not sexual good. That's where I'm drawing that I got line. Like Here's a lady right here with a question. Oh, man. for me? Yeah. Hey, Theo and Chris. I hope you're both doing well. Um, so my question is for both of you. I know Chris has mentioned he's played high school and college basketball. So if you had a pickup game of just stand-up comedians, who would be your starting five and why? Thanks oh, for everything. Great question. You want to go first or want me to go first? Um... Well, I lose by letting you go first. Go ahead. You go first, then. Okay. I'm sure, going to go sure. first. So this is a great question, by the way. It is a great we question. We got to do it like the playground. Theo gets a pick. Then uh, on the snake, Chris, Chris gets, gets two. Chris gets two, and then Theo gets two. All right. We'll do it like that. Go ahead. You go first, Theo. <sighs> Shit. Um, years ago, they tried to <laughs> – is this uh, – Who's your first pick? Years ago. Is this live? <laughs> uh, hold on. My first pick, uh, I need a basketball player. I need somebody. You know, I'm honestly, I am thinking Urban out of the gate. I'm trying to see who's out there that's a good player that maybe used to play. You're already taken. I'm right. going to go with, um, all right, I'm going to go with my boy. I'll go with Brennan Shaw. I'll put him down in the paint. Brennan Shaw? Yep. I was thinking too. I want to only pick black guys, so I'm going to start off with Andrew Schultz. First <laughs> one, <laughs> and then so I got. Yeah, black. Yeah, so. But hold on, no <laughs> mop, no fashion in the paint. No, nah, no, nah, nah, thing, bro. No, nah. you get, do more than three seconds of fashion yeah. in the paint, you're out. So I'm going to take Andrew Schultz as my as my first black guy, mm -hmm. and then um, second, I'm going to take um, second. I'm going to take. Uh, I'll take uh, Dave Chappelle. Wow. Yeah. Does he hoop? I don't know, but I just, it's just nice to have two black legends on your squad. Respect, respect. Yeah. I'm going to go with um, – uh, this is so tough, even though I have this wall right here to help. I'm going to go with – give me – You get two. Hmm? You take two. Okay. Then I'm going to go with – I'll go with Andrew Santino. Mm, nice. He's and you got one more, right? Yep. And I'm going to go with, um, I'll probably roll with Leslie Jones. L nice. That's a nice pick. That's defense. That's defense. Andrew Jones. So now I've picked my final two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my final two, um, I'll say I will go with my second pick. Um, I'd like to go with Eric Griffin. Nice. Yeah. He's tall. Nice. He can coach when he, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I got I to gotta pick for who my coach is going to be. Okay. Um. And then for the fifth, my final, I'd like to round it out. I'll, I'll round it out with Bill Burr. Wow. I'll okay. round it out with Bill Burr. Just a tough Boston guy that, you know, will miss one shot and start punching people in the face, cause a fight. I like that. Okay. I want to like a scrappy white dude. Respect. So that's Bill Burr. Respect, man. I'm going to roll then. I, I need a little bit of outside. I'm going to need a shooter from the outside. 
So I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with, Give me uh give me Sebastian. I'll take Sebastian Menes. Nice. Wow. I could see him, he stays in shape. Yep. And I could see him it might be really hilarious to watch, but I could see him somehow shooting a three pointer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in those pants. And I could see him jumping when he does it. He needs to jump, yeah. <laughs> you got one more pick. All right, I got one more pick. Then I need I'm gonna need a little bit more help down in the paint. I'm gonna go with somebody long. I'm gonna go with Chris Porter. Nice, Chris Porter. That's a nice squad. And now, coach, coaching, my team would like to be coached by Ari Shafir. Okay. I think he's got I think he would have some words for the reps. <laughs> that would piss people off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. All right. Uh, my team, I think, is going to be coached by Eric Griffin, actually. So he's going to have to come out of the game sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> riffing with it, just riffing reps. Yeah, yeah. So I would go coached by Eric Griffin. All yeah. right. That's, I think that's a nice squad. Hopefully that answers uh, the young lady's question. Why Y'all going to leave Kirk Fox on the bench? He's yes, I super am. super tall. And he, was at, he plays tennis. He's athletic. Yeah, I don't know if I see him doing basketball well. He was also in The Patriot, which was one of my favorite movies. Interesting. Shout out Mel Gibson. Um, I could also give, yeah, Bobby Lee would be nice on the team. Is it so? Oh, uh, we could use him as the basketball. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. yeah. <laughs> just use him as like this, like a complaining little basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Bobby Lee, man. Here's another guy's podcast, the Tiger Belly podcast. I did. Oh man, that was it's fantastic. So, so shout out Bobby Lee. Thank you. It's so much fun. Yeah. What I mean, Andy obviously, Santino. what is it about the podcast? I mean, that everybody. I mean, it definitely allows you to know people kind of better. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I think because I think it's because like when I did also Andrew Santino with Whiskey Ginger, another one that helped me. It's like you just talk for an hour or two about anything. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's a mix of both, divulge information. People feel like they really know you, they're investing in you. It's not like a five minute little Tonight Show set, which is fine, or even an hour long stand up set, which is still disconnected. A podcast is like, hey, I, I'm you know me now. Right. So it's like, I'm listening to you, you're in my ear for an hour, it almost feels like a family member, I think, to some people. I know even me, when I listen to podcasts, sometimes to catch up with you guys, I'll listen to your guys' podcast because I'm like, they're, I am can find out about their life this way. Yeah. So, and I think that easily makes an audience member buy a ticket. What I need to do personally is stop divulging so much personal information because mm -hmm. I'm pissing members of my family and friends off because I'm making jokes about them using their real names because oh, yeah, I just yeah. get so in the moment because right now we're just in a little Dude, studio. I did that with my whole town. Yeah, because <laughs> right now we're just like in a little beautiful studio, but like this could be heard by a million plus and I'm just yelling Pat Finnegan. That's his actual <laughs> birth name. That's his government name. He's an active duty father. Firefighter, yeah. and I just said he used to beat people with a bat, and he could lose his job. <laughs> well, look, Pat, or he could gain work somewhere as a bouncer. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying you got to think of the other side of the coin. You could be doing something for yeah, uh, for, for because, Pat Finnegan, because half man. this shit is like you know. I'm having a good time. I'm telling the truth, but I'm making it up or I'm embellishing the details for performance and people get pissed. Like even people in my personal life, like, yo, why the fuck do you say that about me? I'm like, yo, when the mics turn off, I don't even remember what I said. Yeah. Like I genuinely, we're talking for an hour, an hour and a half. I don't know what the fuck I said. I'm just in the moment having fun. That's what I see. I, I used to tell people, I'm just trying to be alive. Like I'm not trying to, I'm trying to stay alive. Yeah. While I'm on a microphone or not. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. What do you so. use, Per Plus? Uh, because it looks like because you have very, very healthy, healthy, healthy hair. Yeah, really? Absolutely, man. Wow, thanks. Not man. a lot of people could pull off a mullet and bangs. So, so this this podcast crew, mullet is, and bangs. That's our new nickname, dude. <laughs> mullet and if bangs. We're ever cops. Speaking of uh people, um, I'm not sure what you just said a second ago, but I do want to say we got. I want to call Brad Williams because remember the, you know this Quaden Bales thing that happened. Yeah, I do. Yeah, the young gunner, this Australian young buck. Right. And uh. And people were really lighting into him. Yeah, but the, right. And Brad did a fundraiser for him, and it was supposed to be to raise ten grand. And I think they raised about a lot more. I want to say a couple hundred thousand. But then, unfortunately, hold picture, on. Okay. Sorry, don't hold on. You say whatever you want. Yeah, I, say what you. Can say. I was going to say. Man. I'm sorry. Pictures, pictures of that kid came out with him with strippers and stuff like that. Did they really? So I don't think he's eight years. I don't. They, they say he's not eight or nine years old, but I don't care. He's still small enough. To, he still can't get on all the rides. So we should still just send him out there. Well, I mean, if you want, I don't know what happened. So what I'm wondering is, do we know what happened? And you guys are going to have to put on the headphones uh, to hear Brad when we call him. I mean, three hundred thousand dollars is a lot of fucking money. I don't know Brad's number. All right.
because this thing really captivated the nation last week. And put the phone Hello? in the middle of the table. Hey, brother, what's up, man? It's Theo. Hey, buddy. How are you? Doing fantastic. Hey, man, thanks for answering the call. I'm, uh, we got Chris Stefano here um, in the podcast right now. And what's up, Brad? Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, Chris, I'm seeing you on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday, man. We're going to do Kimmel together. Oh, y'all are? A little stand-up, yeah. We'll fuck A duet? It. We should. We could do that. I'm down to do that. Yeah, we're yeah we're gonna do a uh, Jeff Dunham match. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hold on. But, <laughs> but Brad, only if Chris sits on your lap. That's the only way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're doing a reverse Jeff Dunham. Oh, yeah, 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 it's gonna be great. Bro, that's Get your hand up my, my ass. It's one of my yeah, favorite sex way, moves. Yeah. A reverse Jeff Dunham. Yeah, you can you you can get a res, a, a reverse Jeff Dunham at the. Uh, at the uh, cat house in Vegas. <laughs> Let's do it, dude. That's why I'll stay an extra night then. <laughs> you don't need an extra night, bro. You just stop by during the day. All right, I'll do that. Don't then. be that creeper that hangs out. Me after. and Brad, daylight cat house. <laughs> um, You're gonna be living in the apartments. <laughs> Brad, oh God, Brad. We had uh, we talked about the Quaid and Bales thing on the podcast last week, and um, and everybody's been talking about it. I know that you did a fundraiser for him. Um, can you kind of take us through a little bit of that and where you're at now with it? Yeah, no problem. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, he's nine years old, everybody. Okay, so stop with your damn conspiracy theories. Uh, he's nine years old. Anyway, uh, I got I got wind of the video because uh, I've got some Australian fans that kept sending me the video, and I don't know like why they kept sending it to me. Just like, hey, you're a dwarf. He's a dwarf. You can help him. Like I like I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. Like, like oh, our like, cousins? Oh, yeah, like I've got some hotline or something. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I saw, but I saw the video, and like anyone who saw the video who's got a pulse, I was uh, really moved by it. Uh, of course, uh, of course I'm, I'm a fellow little person. He's got the same kind of dwarfism that I do, and I was bullied growing up. So it really it it really spoke to me. So I thought I got to do something, but I, I can't, you know, I'm, uh, I'm out in Los Angeles. What can I do? He's in Australia. So I thought, well, I'll throw together a GoFundMe page and send the kid to Disneyland. I grew up going to Disneyland. Kids love Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I did that, set the goal at $10,000 because with $10,000, you can buy them flights, tickets, and maybe two churros. Uh, those yeah. things are expensive. Yeah. Um, and I figured you know that that'd be that'd be a good time so i set it at ten thousand dollars tweeted it out and then i went to bed and uh the next day it was at eighteen thousand dollars damn and and then uh hugh jackman talked about it william shatner talked about it it started getting passed around all these celebrities uh and then currently we're at four hundred and sixty thousand dollars damn god so that's what theo gets for a weekend Homeboy is going to buy <laughs> Disneyland, and I'm thrilled about that. I hope a dwarf owns Disneyland because then probably no more height requirements. I'll be, I'll be happy. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, what? Space Mountain all day. <laughs> and so whenever the whenever the, the, the conspiracy theories came out, I mean, just because, you know, people are skeptical of everything, um, sure. what did you do then? Oh, man, I just kind of let it go. Like, I, if, 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 if I chase down every person that was – talking about it or saying that he's 18 years old or that he's he's not really 18 he's a 45 year old actor you yeah know, just weird stuff yeah like people that. saying he's in dunkirk he was in dunkirk <laughs> yeah that's what people were that's saying hilarious what were they dropping him out of the plane <laughs> all kind of shit I, I have no idea <laughs> He played one of the bombs. You guys see him? <laughs> yeah. Dropping him onto the Germans. <laughs> yeah, people were. There were all kinds of conspiracy theories. People were saying that he worked for the city. I remember somewhere outside of Akron. There was all kind of wild stuff. But did you did you check with him? Did you do any other recon to make sure that you were like? Did you yeah. have any question? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to make sure that uh, he's a good kid and that you know he's a kid. But I got to Facetime with him and uh, Facetime wow. with both him and his mom. And that's back when the fundraiser was at twenty thousand dollars, and it really hadn't picked up yet. Uh, new, uh, news organizations weren't really talking about it, uh, so I was FaceTiming with him. He seems like a fun, normal kid. Oh. And then once it started going above like fifty thousand dollars, seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, I started reaching out to a bunch of different people that 
um, run charities and do these kind of thing things all things all the time. Uh, GoFundMe is an incredible website because uh, once a fundraiser hits a certain point, they assign <coughs> a team mm. to that fundraiser. So I had a wow. team from GoFundMe and constant constant communication, and they vetted everything. Wow. They they oh. looked into everything. They did amazing work. So and, and yeah. where does the money go? Well, and uh, we we posted an update on the page. Uh, so Caden and his family actually released a statement that said that they are turning down the trip to Disneyland and they want all the money to just go to charity. Wow. Uh, so That's he's, dope. And he's ridiculous. Are you going to so, pick the charity? Does he pick the charity? How does it work? Uh, I did another FaceTime call with him and, and his mom. And we kind of went through all all the charities that we wanted to go through, because if you look at the original wording on my GoFundMe, I said any excess money would be donated to charity. Mm. Uh, so we we picked some great charities, and uh, they're actually posted right now on the GoFundMe page. We picked uh, six different charities. Uh, some some oh, charities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now uh, Stomp Out Bullying, uh, Born This Way. Those are two charities. In the United States, there's uh, four charities in in uh, in Australia. We're giving about sixty six thousand dollars to each of those charities, and then whatever money is left over, mm -hmm. uh, I I decided to give it to Caden and his family, and said uh, you guys can spend that money however you want. I know you're turning down money, but many people donated to this fund with the thought of their money going directly to the family. Right. So I thought. And is, it, and is it 400000 U.S. or Australian? What's the uh, currency? It, yeah, it's uh, 460000 U.S., wow. which is wow. a little over 700000 Australian. Yo, they could buy one of those fucking, they could buy the Aborigine people with that, <laughs> right? Oh, Not all of them. You could buy probably a couple. A couple of them, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. and uh, this is a good time to add that uh, some of the charities are anti-racism charities that stand up for the rights of Amen. the Aborigine people. Absolutely, <laughs> as do I. <laughs> I've never met an Aborigine person. Have you? Yeah, Theo. Uh, yes, I would I love. To, I would. I would love to meet one. I know because I have a. I don't think I have any Aborigine uh, fans, but I'm looking for that. That's one of the things I'm trying to get from my podcast. There yeah. you go. You got to get It'll some. Fantastic and yeah, and, and and I and I Brad too because you know because I'm only I'm just a victim of the internet as well. It's like all <laughs> these pictures are like oh he's 19 years old he's with strippers he's got guns. I mean how do they do all that? Yeah. Like what like what is it? Listen, Photoshop. The, the internet is an amazing place, uh, both good and bad. I mean, there were there were people that were spreading rumors that like. Oh, uh, like there was some, like I looked at a oh, yeah. lot of this stuff because I wanted to make sure that the that the, that the money was going to a good, a good spot. There was one person who had a Facebook talk show that said like that Caden was like this nine year old running around uh, the school like sexually assaulting girls, mm -hmm. and I mean they 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 said that their proof was that they read one Facebook comment. That and they posted the Facebook comment and it said, "Oh, a friend of mine, his his kid goes to the same school and knows some girls." Where this happened, I'm like, "Really? You're going through all this off a of Facebook comment?" Yeah, that's ridiculous, like, man. Ridiculous. Yeah. Do you? People were going nuts. Is there? I mean, yeah. There's all kind of stuff. Somebody people said he opened up for Gucci Mane. There was all kind of shit. That's, I mean, well that, well, that that is the problem is when UTA signs him and he starts taking dates away from everybody. We're gonna be like, "Fuck you, Brad." <laughs> That's right. a great point, yeah. man. Yeah. This dude's yeah. gonna be. Yo, know, they signed Bagel Boy. Yeah. Bagel Boss. Yeah, they had this kid named Lightning Rod. Uh, Lightning Rod. I don't want to say Lightning Rod. Lightning Rodney, maybe when I was growing up, some guy that got hit by lightning, and they tried to tour him around locally. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he was probably moving major tickets. Oh, he wasn't doing anything. Maybe forty tickets. Nah, Caden will sell out. <laughs> now, what about this, Brad? Are there higher costs yeah. associated with being like a a little person growing up? Like, are there costs that? Are there extra oh, costs? Sure. Yeah, well, like just in terms of, I mean, at your most basic cost, uh, most clothes that uh, I would like to buy uh, don't fit me. So you got to get stuff that's uh, tailored unless you just want to be walking around with like a shirt that has Bob the Builder on it. But uh, right. I doubt you want that. Yeah. So, yeah, you have extra tailoring. And then plus a lot of little people 
have uh, medical problems, whether, whether it be neck or uh, leg surgeries. I've had one dwarf related surgery on, on my legs. So yeah, they, they can, they, they can get problems that way as well. So that's why I wanted to give the family a, a little bit of money just because if those kind of things are coming up with Caden, I want to make sure that they're taken care of. And that's what the people who gave money to the campaign wanted as well. So yeah, uh, that's dope. Yeah. Man, and, that's and, dope. And and it's really great and really and and people stepped up and we ended up donating a ton of money to charity that's going to anti bullying and anti abuse, uh, anti racism charities. So a lot well, of people are a lot of people are going to be helped in a very positive way because of this. And yeah, I cannot be more thankful. That's yeah, awesome. man, and I know you know because you're I'm a I'm a dad. I know you're a new dad. Congrats! It's like when I see Thank stuff you. like that, and I'm sure it's the same with you. It's like you can't help but think like, what if that was my child being abused that way? Like, mm. you know, so oh. it's, it's great that you can, that you made an effort and did it. Cause I, there's thing, there's times when I see videos like that and I'm like, I can't, what if that was my daughter? And then I have a chance to donate and I just watch Pornhub or, or do something different. <laughs> but you actually went out there and made a difference, which is why you're happily married and I'm, you know, single living with Don DePetta on his couch. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. I still, yeah. That's why I got visitation rights, but you, you know, but you have a full, happy family. <laughs> There's still time. Um, Brad, uh, thanks so much, man. And uh, yeah, at least Chris will be warmed up for your podcast later this week, man. Hey, sounds great. Thank you, guys. Gang, gang, everybody. Uh, gang. Before he hangs up, can you hear me? Yeah. What's the quickest way to uh, get to your GoFundMe? Because when you just search on GoFundMe, we can't find it. So how, how can we get to the actual GoFundMe? Oh, uh, if you guys still want to donate to the GoFundMe, because it is still open, uh, you can. Uh, probably the quickest way is just to go to my Twitter mm -hmm. and then scroll down the tweets and you'll find you'll find links. I'm on Twitter at Funny Brad. And uh, if, if not, I'm sure you can just Google uh, GoFundMe for a uh, bullied Australian boy and something's going to pop up. There will be news articles. There will be links. Uh, you can... And there'll Definitely be $460,000 in there already, so. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, man. And I, had so, and I had so many friends that were like, it really makes you realize who your friends are because I had so many friends that were like uh, sen sending me messages like, dude, embezzle it, take yeah. it, go to Sweden. And I'm like, no. go to Sweden? Yeah. <laughs> what or, the fuck? So what if you disguised <laughs> yourself as Quaden and went to Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shave, get shave, get a tan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it could happen, doing, man, dude. <laughs> uh, dude, thanks so much. It's such a it's such a cool story to hear, man. And, and um, yeah, just thanks for jumping on the line with us and sharing that. No problem. Love you guys. Love the podcast. See see you on Thursday, Chris. See you Thursday, Brad. Right, Thank love you, you, man. Peace. It's that time. That's right. This winter, you should start a new routine and upgrade your everyday life with a monthly box of awesome. Imagine a box shows up and what's in it. Oh, awesome. That's right. A box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. What do you have, guy? Uh, I got the best. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly with aged winter cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear. Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. If you're not doing awesome, you can be. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over 70 bucks worth of gear inside. I just got my box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Got this beautiful uh, green um, traveling carry bag, and I'm really excited about using it when I go to Maui. Sorry to brag, but I'm so excited. Right now, you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code THEO at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code T-H-E-O, for 20% off your first box. Support this past weekend. Get that box of awesome. And now, back to Chris. What a great guy. 
Yeah, He's and about last night, that's their podcast, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, actually, uh, that's just Adam Ray now. Brad's not on anymore. Oh, right on. He's not on the pod. Yeah, so. He, um, yeah, Brad's going to get rewarded in the afterlife for that. Mm-hmm. You know, because I don't know, like, there's certain rules and regulations with little people in the afterlife. They have to do certain tasks. Absolutely. They have to do certain tasks to get into. No, that's that movie you're talking about, I think. I thought that was reality. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because I, um, because, yeah, I wasn't sure. And I wanted to ask Brad, but I kind of chickened out is because the thing is, like, they all kind of look alike to me. Little people? (laughs) So I was kind of wanting to be like Brad. Like, you know, Brad looks different. He's, you know, famous and doing well. But, like, all the other ones, like, all these little pictures, like, I don't know. It's all the same to me. Well, dude, I saw. I respect them all, but I just, you know what I mean? You don't respect them all. I do. I respect them all. (laughs) I I keep my distance safely, and I respect them all. Wow. (laughs) I'll tell you this. I saw two cats attack a... uh, attack a little person in Hermosa Beach. And this is about seven years ago, or probably about 11 years ago now. I saw two cats attack a little person in Hermosa, dude. And it was insane, bro. It was like Rome. It was like watching ancient Rome go really? down. Really? Yeah. I kissed a little pr- woman on the lips. Yeah. Like a couple of years ago, made out oh, after wow. the show. Beautiful, really? beautiful spirit, beautiful soul. And uh, was that in where, Baltimore? That was not in Baltimore. That was actually outside Bananas Comedy Club. Oh, Hasbro over there in Hasbro Heights? Heights? Yep, I made out with a little little girl. Not a little girl. A little, <laughs> what an <laughs> ironic A little woman. I made out with a little person who was a legally aged woman in her 20s. Sorry. Damn. Um, what an ironic name for the city, Hasbro Heights. Yeah. There you go. Nikki Bangs. <laughs> 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 Bang. Hitting them hard. Yo, dude. Brad was talking about Disney World, too. I just came from, or Disneyland, Mm -hmm. which I think is a great thing that he's doing. Disney World, I just took my daughter to Disney World in Orlando. Oh, wow. Me, my mother, and my daughter. And And now, has this been a lifelong dream or something? Has this been like one of those things? Or have you taken your kid before? I wanted to take take my daughter for Christmas time. Delilah, is that her name? Delilah. She's on the wall. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take my daughter, Delilah, to Germany for Christmas. This year, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go. And that's all about up. as Christmas as you can get. Let's yeah. go to Germany. I wanted to show her. I wanted to show her um, where Christmas started yeah. and where the white race started. Oh yeah, I wanted yeah. to show her where where the humble beginnings <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, Reich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, um, I'm kidding. But yeah, I'm, yeah. This show, I'm just <laughs> fucking around. You got to know I'm just fucking around. I Dude, I know you're fucking around. No, but bro. the dwarf jokes. I'm just kidding around. Bro, well, I said I want to buy Aborigine people, and it's like they're <laughs> slaves over there. Fucking, I'm being an idiot. But don't bro, cut I it. I said you could buy a few. I know. You I want... said I could buy the race. Yeah, that's crazy. I had crazy. a discount, man, on GoFundMe, and also it's like, I, you know. All those surgeries doesn't have universal health care. Yeah, what are you gonna do for where in Australia? Yeah, for the leg surgeries that he'll he'll need. Well, they could. Yeah, I just don't. I don't know if they do or not. They have universal. I'm just healthcare kidding around. They do have. Yeah, but I'm just kidding. I just hope people know I'm just joking around. Yeah, because you feel like you have to be. You have to say that now in these. Podcasts. But am I not helping you with my vibes? My yeah, vibes. Because sometimes serious? I'll say something. You'll just look at me oh, and just what the bottom of your. You'll just start <laughs> curling the bottom of your mullet <laughs> with your finger. Uh, I'll just see what. I'll just see your fucking hair. It's a sign for help. Dude. Yeah, you'll just be like, yo. <laughs> Sorry. You just, I'm like, you just look at me, you'll unbutton a button, Nikki Bangs will fucking, you know, Don's texting women. <laughs> Don's in a full sex hall. <laughs> you know, so, no. Bro, have you ever been texting somebody like about sex and you're having like a business conversation or something with somebody else at the same time? Yeah, well, th- today on the plane, I fell asleep. I was flying Jeff oh. and I fell asleep and my phone was open and some girl, had, and my Snapchat was open. Some girl sent her titties on Snapchat <laughs> while the flight attendant, I was just having my eyes closed and the flight attendant gave me my breakfast. <laughs> but yeah, those titties were open. <laughs> yeah. On, on my tray. Dude, I had a woman on a plane once wake me up from being asleep and tell me my penis was erect, bro. No. And that it was bothering her. Yeah. Really? What'd you do? Yeah. She said, your body, sir, your body. Didn't you used to go and manipulate women's vaginas, though, for health reasons? Wasn't that used to be an old job? We yep. used to talk about it on Opie. Yep. We used to do orgasmic meditation. Right. You still fuck with that or no? I don't. I've been... There's some people trying to get me back into it, but I think they're just kind of looking for... You know, I don't know. I, I, I just, it's too much time. It's just, I don't have the time right now. Right. Dude, I went to Disney. I went to Disney World, right? And they were priding themselves. Because, like I said, I want to take her to Germany. I want to take my daughter to Germany. And I said to my mom. And she's said, Latina, isn't it? She's Latina. She's Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. She's half Puerto Rican, half, you know, German, Irish, Italian, just white. Yeah, clockmaker. She's white. Yeah, she's just fucking clockmaker. Just white European, and then yeah, I've seen the nut. I've seen the Nutcracker, dude. Yeah, yeah. So that's just me. West Side yeah. Story. It's just me. So, so I tell her. I tell my mom. I'm like, hey, do you want to come with us to Germany? 
um, I want to take my daughter to Germany and you, know, you could come through, I'll buy you a plane ticket, you know, you can babysit or whatever. When I go out and get these German guys, you know, brothels or whatever at late night. And, um, and my mom goes, no, we're not going to go to Germany. Let's go to Disney World. And if you want to go to Germany, we could just go to Epcot and go to the German country yeah. and we can have some beers because she's four years old. Why are you taking her to Germany? And I'm like, <laughs> this, this is my idea. I just want to show her Christmas. She's like, she's too young. She's yeah. not going to have a good time. So my mother convinced me to go to Disney. So we go to Disney. Here's the thing. So first of all, the, the trip starts off. Disney World starts off poorly because I had... I, I, um, I just come off great run of shows at Gotham Comedy Club. Beautiful. New York City, great. My hometown. Chris Mazzilli, a legend Chris Mazzilli, over there. Chris Mazzilli, legend. Great shows. And every time I pee, it's burning. Mm. It's burning. I got a little sting. So I'm like, ah, fuck. And Whatever. you've been having sex with random women? I've been having unprotected sex. Yep. So I'm just like, for months before that. You oh, know, yeah. I probably had unprotected sex with about 40 plus women. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's, they don't call me Chrissy Drip Drop for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah. so I've since improved. But hey, you know, man, bro. No, I like yeah, you yeah, yeah. out there, and you ain't afraid to get you know just to be a human. Chrissy drip drop, baby, taking chances, bro. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, so the tr trip is going good. First of all, you know, it's, you're in about ten thousand dollars to have you know your mother and your daughter go. You're in about it's about ten G's. So first day we get there, we go to the Magic Kingdom, and you get there, and all they do is pride themselves. All Disney World does is pride themselves on how. It, it, um, how friendly they are to the uh, nature economy. Mm -hmm. How do you say that? How they're um, what they're uh, eco friendly. They're eco friendly. So they're saying they use paper straws. All mm -hmm. we do is use paper straws. You love us, paper straws. Ba 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 ba. Then I take my daughter to get her hair done at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, mm -hmm. which is the boutique in the Magic Kingdom. Six hundred fucking dollars no way. to get her hair done. An extra Would you get it done into, dude? A hot air balloon? <laughs> no, dude, I got it done into Nick's Banks. <laughs> <laughs> That's about six hundred. <laughs> you know, so six hundred dollars to get her done with the prince. She got a Cinderella dress. She got her hair done by Cinderella. Wow. So it's a whole experience. And then you, and then an extra fifty bucks for tea. I saw them making the tea at a fucking Keurig oh, yeah. in the back. So bullshit. Mm -hmm. So it's like okay, paper straws. You're using paper straws. You'll save the turtles, but you'll rape. You'll rape the fucking parents, right? Mm -hmm. So all fucked up. So I was pissed off because my mother had my credit card because I was take I was on my phone a lot, responding to emails, you know, sexting. I was in a full sex hole <laughs> and work hole while my daughter and mother are experiencing these beautiful oh things God. at Disneyland. So this I'm just story of your life. I'm just fully out of my yeah. mind, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Boy. So I'm being an idiot. So my mother's like, listen, why don't you, oh, we'll meet you back here in two hours. Give me your credit card. And then my, uh, see my Amex just getting fucking hit up. Oh, Bippity -bop what are they doing? Six hundo. Getting taffy and Caricature. stuff? Caricature. Yeah, my mom, my mom got shirts, you know. That wild Western drawing where pictures. they get the fake gun. Yo, I was gone for two hours. She hit my car for $2,300. Oh. Kiz ash. Psh, psh, psh. Oh <laughs> yeah. And I just was like, fuck. So then I'm like, because then I got stressed out. And when you get stressed out and you have chlamydia on deck, when you have STD brewing, when you get stressed out, it's it fat. really starts to flow. Yep. So I was like, shit, I know I have it. So I called my boy, who's an ER doctor, mm -hmm. and I explained to him the signs and symptoms. He was like, fuck, Hey, dude. drop off a bag of salt over yo, here. Yo, yo, yo. He was like, <laughs> that's a haunted a, castle. He was like, that's an STD, man. How quick can you get back to New York? New York? I said, I, this is day one of my Disney trip. We're at the Magic Kingdom. He goes, all right, send me your location. So I sent him the location. He sent, gets a pharmacy, like whatever, 10 miles away, but in Orlando still, mm -hmm. still kind of like on the outskirts of Disney. Like a, oh, not in Disney. No, nah, no, nah, but like on the, not on the Disney property, but like where Disney, people who work for Disney, like their local CVS. Okay. So he goes out there, calls in the STD fucking medication for me. So I go there, so waiting on this, everyone's got little kids, you know, sore throat medicine, people buying binkies. Everyone's got little Kims too L over little there. Little been there. And I'm over there, and I go, urban. I go over there, and I pick up. STD medication. I had a goofy shirt on. I swear, I had a goofy shirt on and an I Love Disney hat on. <laughs> and I forgot that I even, because I was dressed, you know, my, my daughter was like, you got to dress, wear your Disney shit. Yeah, yeah. So I picked up STD med. I took them, my daughter and mother, back to the hotel. I said, hey, listen, I'm just going to go for a jog. And I got in an Uber and I went and picked up those STD meds Amen. with my goofy shirt on and I popped those. And then I started to feel better, started to feel a little bit better. And now I'm proud to say that I've been Chrissy Condoms. I was Chrissy Celibacy. For a month after that, and now I've been exclusively Chrissy condoms. But even now that I, I've been wearing condoms exclusively, still sometimes when I pee, it burns a little. I'm like, do I did I get one bat? Did one sneak through the condom? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that that's just me being hyperactive and anxious? If I'm using the condoms, you wouldn't worry about the STD. I think. You what, could, what do you say? I think you could have muscle memory probably in your penis or something mm -hmm. that, and it it has that recall a little bit of having 
the symptom. Have you, you ever know? got sniped? Have you ever got burnt with an STD? Yep, I got something one time. I was living with a guy, this guy named Ken, actually, who had a couple cats, dude, and mm-hmm. he used to get stoned and make them do tricks in the living room and stuff, right. jump in these boxes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and when I was leaving, when I was moving out, he said, hey, uh, so people are going to come look at the... Uh, the place you know okay and so some lady came by and checked it out and she was attractive and so i started hitting on her right and um and then that night she she and i went out right and he just said to me he's like dude do not hook up with this young lady who is potentially gonna live here you know right like i need somebody to live here right i "I will not do that right (laughs) and then i hooked up with her that night in the room right next to his room (laughs) and you went raw daddy I, I, I don't believe I had any condoms at the time. And uh What'd you and, catch? The clap? Gonorrhea? No, she caught something from me. But she told me. She said, Hey, you have something. And I don't know if I did have something because I didn't have something before. I think she was lying. But then one of us had something and uh and yeah, to go get rid of it. Yeah, I got chlamydia. But it was good though. But you never had any symptoms of the chlamydia. It wasn't bad, nah. But you just go get something and you get rid of it, and that's the only scare that right. I ever it's had. Right. Like, it's kinda like a sore throat, but for your dick. In yeah, a way, yeah. it's you, like your dick is almost going through a tough time after a war or something, it feels like. Yeah, it's a little beat up. It's like your dick, yes, yeah, just on the injured reserve list, but it's it's going to make a full comeback. Yeah, yeah. It's almost exciting a little. It's like a little bit of a badge of, I, you know, I hear from older men, it used to be a badge of honor back in the day. You but know? how do you oh, combat? Dante has chlamydia, you know. How do you combat let's being get single? Him a champagne, you know, let's do a champagne. And getting all the attention that you do from females, how do you how do you not fall into a sex addict hole? Do you just not respond to people? Because sometimes I text you and you don't text back, and I want to know if there's ladies out there that feel that way as well. Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, I think uh, how do I not? I mean, I'll do some flirting here and there, you know, like. Mm-hmm. But, but you don't respond to all these ladies on the DM. No, because I'm constantly responding, and I have to. I've I've been ma- I've made a very recent effort. Like the last 72 hours, I actually posted a video <laughs> on my stories and I said, hey, I know I give you guys a lot of energy. I love you. Thank you so much for your support. But if I leave you on scene or if I just double tap your message, don't don't take it disrespectfully. I just I got to I got to take care of me first because I was live in a, a life. Yeah, I was fully too much invested in that phone and in those DMs. And I was, you know, and there was a point where I was having sex, no condoms. And then I even having sex with the condoms. I'm like, even though you're protecting yourself, which is good, you're still the act is still, you're still delving into all this energy and all this. Oh fuel yeah, it's a ton them. of extra energy. I haven't recently, I haven't really had as much energy to really just be out milling around, you know. Just, you're jerking you know, off a lot? Trying not to jerk off that much. I did masturbate yesterday, I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. So that was really a kind of a wild event, but. Um, <laughs> Do you watch porn? No, try not to watch porn. I don't jerk it like this either. I don't know. I've a, I lay my penis on my stomach and I put my hands like this and I rub the base of my penis and I come into my belly button. <laughs> oh wow! What? Yeah, dude. that's always the way I've masturbated. It sounds so French. I feel like it's always the way I masturbate. Man, <laughs> I make like a little pussy, a pussy, with my thumbs and I rub the base. Hit it, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick. Nick does a big E is how you're rapping, but um. <laughs> yeah, and I blow it alone into my belly button. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I used to let it gla- glaze over too, and just my shirts or shorts were always. We stuck to my belly button. I used to rip it off when I was a kid, and I was I would always have a cut in my belly button. People thought I used to have my belly button pierced, but it wasn't. It was from the cum dried up on my stomach oh, that would rip off. It was the skin. God, to, brother. Yeah, dude. If Are I we was, doing all right on this podcast? Is this all right? I think we're good. <laughs> all right, this is fantastic. Dude, I know that if I ejaculate, I will use it now. When I was young, I wouldn't do anything with it. I would deposit it or ejaculate into like a bowl or into a um, you know, into a toilet or something. I, but I, now I, I will actually use some of it on my body as like a, you know, legitimately as an ointment or a salve. I've never been in a voluntary gay sex act. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, I was like the runt of my friend group. Mm-hmm. I was like 10 and my friends were 13, 14. I could see and, that. And the McKenzie brothers, <laughs> one time I was taking a shit. Were, were they redheaded? Uh, no, but they were twins and they had shaved heads. They were crazy Irish oh, kids yeah, from Queens. Yeah. One of them sat on my legs when I was taking a shit, and the other one jumped on my mom's sink and skull fucked me. Two pumps, and my head hit off the back. God, uh, the back. I swear to God, the back ceramic tile, and knocked down one of my mom's ceramic tiles. And and I told it I was horsing around playing ball, but really I got skull fucked by God. by one of these dudes. And I remember tasting a little bit of his pre cum, and, and oh. yeah, it was weird, man. I took one right off the uvula, and I didn't. <laughs> and I and I didn't. Uh, That's a hot. Take. I didn't like it. That's no, the problem take, is I didn't bro. like it. I did not like it. Yep. But I also didn't hate it, so that's why I'll say I can confidently tell you that I'm a I'm hundred. I'm a hundred percent sure I am not gay, mm-hmm. but I am also one hundred percent sure I'm not straight. Yeah. So you tell me what that means. Well, I think there's a ele- there's a thing called where element of surprise gay, where somebody surprises you with a gay act, <laughs> like a Pearl Harbor gay. 
yeah, like Pearl Harbor, but it, yeah, suddenly you're just resting and then a bunch of wieners fall on your house. A you sneak know? attack, yeah. Yeah, like that kind of thing is like... Because there's been times where I, you know, and I have been walking, you know, when we've been in New York, when we were very close, so I, I was definitely falling in love with the conversations we were having. I was oh, yeah. about to hold your hand or something like that. Really? Yes. You always used to, I remember there was one time you were wearing, you're wearing pinstripe pants, like locomotive pants. Yeah, I used remember to the, love those pants, and I bought them very cheap. Yeah, man, those locomotive pants. I remember, yeah, you know. All aboard, Theo's, baby. Yeah, all aboard, Theo, uh, you know, because you kind of have a little bit of a fucking cake ass. I got that keister, bro. You do got a keister. You know, I got that German keister. You, Here's oh, a white fault. guy right here from Lord of the Rings. Let's see what he has. <laughs> Literally... Does Chris know there's literally a 2% chance that you'll die if you get the coronavirus? Two. It's just the flu. Gang, gang. Gang, bro. I didn't say anything about the coronavirus, though. I We use to solicit questions for you the video of you having Anxiety Tuesday. Right. So I think he thinks you're going a little. But yeah. Well, the whole thing about Anxiety Tuesday, you know, hopefully get some new fans come over to me. The Anxiety Tuesday, I never do it on a Tuesday. Um, I don't do it every two, every. I do it once every other week, and it's always playing. It's always sarcasm and satire about something. So that coronavirus video, although I'm appearing to be saying I'm anxious about it, the point of Anxiety Tuesday is to be satire because I agree with him that it's not something to really worry about. Yeah, I think it's not something to worry about. I yeah. feel like, I mean, I, but also, and then in two weeks, you and I could be deceased, you know? It's we like, could be. I wouldn't be shocked if something, a disease gets created that that we can't solve. Um, I think the Chinese created it in a lab. I don't think, I think people who like think- Like Eminem kind of? I think, exactly. Happy Black History Month. Well, uh, thank you. And also, I want to say Also, Happy this. Women's Month. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it is Women's Month, huh? Yes. 5G. Now, there's a theory out there that 5G created. Have you seen this, Nick? Who's 5G? Is he a rapper as well? No, 5G the wireless. Oh, okay. Yeah, 5G wireless, which was created over there in Wuhan. Right, in the Wuhan clan. Yeah, that that is where, that that's the thing that's created it. Is I, the, I don't think for a second that it wasn't created in a lab. It feels like, it feels like it was created in a lab to cause hysteria as just something else you can blame Donald Trump for. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Democrat. I wouldn't be surprised if Ocasio Cortez and the Wuhan lab created straight that out thing. of Wuhan. Yeah, straight out of Wuhan. If uh, some and Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden and all those liberals cucks created the 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 the, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. put that shit, made the masks with the masks are made in China, which everyone wears. They dip those in coronavirus, sell the masks to us, and we spread it, and it crashes the economy, gets Trump out of office. But here's the truth. You can't get Trump out of office. He'll always be here to stay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he could be here for a long time. Social media conspiracies blame coronavirus on 5G internet. This is what I'm talking about right here. And this is... Um, She'll get kissed on... This lady will get cracked open and cleaned out. Uh, I like her lips. Yeah, this lady is... Uh, By the way, I, I just wanted to say I was joking about the Trump Democrat. I was just kidding. I have no political affiliation. Oh, dude. I, look, I think that... Any, I don't hate Trump. I don't love him. Anytime somebody starts winning... They definitely release a lot of information to like try and cannibalize. Remember, they said a few weeks ago that the Russians were Russian bots were supporting Bernie. Remember right. that? Like what? Like it's just like it just never ends. People I don't believe hate. the news anymore. I'm not a news believer. No. But I will say this though: now that's the interesting theory that 5G why that 5G created it. That 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 that's what's causing it. Because wouldn't it be interesting if they had a a, a, a technological advancement? that we don't know the side effects of, which is probably most of them. Right. That we don't know the oh, side yeah. effects. Like what if we created like a wireless or some sort of a, you know, a thing that's flowing through our body sometimes through the air mm -hmm. and it causes a disease in us. That could, it sounds like pretty feasible. Pretty feasible, but so far, have there been people that have beaten the coronavirus and 100% cleared it already and it's gone? Most people. Most people. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. It's one dude. of those things. Sh yeah, you got to show me a dead, bro. Yeah, S M A D, bro. Show me a dead before I go full. Well, some people are dying, but it seems like it's more elderly. Where? Yeah, but that's just a dead. An old person dies, and they should do a snap of them. Oh, here's right. Granny left. You, you want to see somebody at the top of their fucking game? Yeah, drop dead of the coronavirus. Yeah, dude, I want to see Tyson Fury freaking take. You know? Yeah, take it. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. 92,000 yeah. cases, 48,000 have recovered, 3,000 have died. 
That's worldwide. Yeah. And that so the flu I bet this, those three thousand are babies and old people. So the seasonal flu kills way more than that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's I mean, it's listen. You can worry about everything. Here's a guy Who's right this guy? here, huh? This is a guy from obviously was, was, from the a, 1920s. A good guy, yeah. He's got a nice mustache. Man. One of those strong men with the oh yeah, with the 200 pound dumbbells. He votes for Trump. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Shane Dog here. What's up, out Shane? In Ellensburg, Washington. Wanted to let you both know I love both of you guys. You guys are both two of my favorite comedians. You okay, guys bro. give me something to look forward to every week, and you guys make me laugh nonstop guys are killing it and please keep doing what y'all are doing now this question here is a little bit more directed towards crystal clear chrissy mm -hmm. little chlamydia chrissy over here i need to ask him a real serious question i'm going to new york for the first time i got nominated for an award for my college radio show and so did my station so i'm going out there i'm going to be put up in manhattan pretty close to uh, Madison Square Garden, and there's a lot of things you can do in New York, but I want to know what your authentic New York experience is for some West Coast kid trying to go out and be an East Coast cutie with a smoothie out here in these streets. Okay. And Theo, I'd like to know, where, what's your favorite spot in New York? What do you like about New York? I want your opinion on New York. Okay. Gang Gang and Ladder 14. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Um, I like, yeah, I like, uh, I like, uh, Two out of the three of your fans so far to have lisps. You got a heavy lisp fan. Yeah. You got li yeah. We got a lot of damage. Uh, damaged dudes. Yeah. So I like that kid a lot. He's got an endearing voice. I think anyone with a little bit of a, of a lisp like that, it's endearing to me. I would like to list that on the radio. Do you think he has a lisp, though? I or? think he has a lisp. I, f I kept wiping my cheeks. I thought he was spitting on me. Did they do really? <laughs> yeah, through the camera. But I think I like he might just have a you, you, you could have unique shape. You have a very unique shaped head. What if the sound's not coming in right? That's true. My head is fucked up. No. But I like that kid. I liked his mustache. I like. He seemed like a real nice kid. So what I'm going to tell him to do is when he's come to, come to uh, yeah, New give York him that City, experience. I'm going to say he could come through to come through to my crib. Yep. That's what I'm going to say is that unique experience just for him. He could come through and he could come tickle me with that mustache, <laughs> just like the McKenzie brothers. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I think um, I think what he should do is go get a slice of pizza from Joe's mm -hmm. in the West Village by mm -hmm. the Comedy Cellar. I think he should go see a stand-up show yep. at the Comedy Cellar or. If, one of his comedians that he knows he's a fan of is performing in New York City. Go see him or her headline at Gotham or Caroline's Comedy Club. If not, go see go down to the Comedy Cellar or the Stan Comedy Club or New York Comedy Club. These are great venues um, to see a show. Go get a slice of pizza from Joe's. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if he's never been there, it's just an experience to walk over the Brooklyn Bridge because it's scary as fuck when you get into the middle because it's only wooden planks. So you can see down Amen. hundreds of feet below you and you'll fall to your death. Definitely see Brooklyn. I would go to Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, along with Williamsburg and some of the trendy, you know, quinoa flea market places. Also go to deep Brooklyn, like go to Bay Ridge because it's like a different experience because in Williamsburg, you know, it'll be like I said, quinoa and flea markets and scooters. But then in Bay Ridge, like the day after Trump won the election in 2016, there was a cafe out there giving out free black and white cookies. So you want to see both extremes of, you know, they gave, they were giving cups of marinara sauce into my daughter's Halloween trick or treat bag at Nino's Pizza on Third Avenue. Oh, that's beautiful. And they're calling it Bat's Blood. So it's different, different types of experiences mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. So I would go see that. Um, and then uh, you could come, you could come with me uh, if, if you're there on a Tuesday afternoon. We go take my father to dialysis at College of Staten Island Hospital. If you'd like to come there, you can come see um, him get his blood filter. How many bags is he doing? <sighs> I want to say two bags. Two, three bags. Not bad. Easy work. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about farts? This guy, he doesn't, my father doesn't wear underwear anymore. Yeah. Because he constantly shits his pants. Well, dude, if you're running on somebody else's blood, who knows what kind of gas is in it? That's true. You know? That's true. You got to think about that. I really like your fan. I like this part of the podcast where fans come in. Dude, the best fans, man. The best listeners, the best group. We got such a, yeah, the whole, it just it's con it constantly amazes me, man. And um, that young fella said he's going to New York for the first time. And what did he ask me? Uh, what do you like about New York? What's your New York I say experience? You got to go down to Alphabet City, man. That's All what you right. got to say. It's your last place to get still get mugged anywhere in Manhattan. I feel like kind mm -hmm. of in that area, you got to go down there, over, down up maybe Second and B or something, or go even further, go to C or D. Yeah, A and B is a little hipster honk a donk now, but once you get to C, it starts to fade, and then D, you're in the full hood. Yes, Avenue D, you you will get stabbed right now. There you go, and so, that it's the last place you can still do it. Anywhere else is just more. It's just changed a lot. The Bronx, you could still. Get get stabbed a little bit but the bronx is 
going too far out of the way. But if you want to be on the island of Manhattan, mm -hmm. I agree with Theo. Go to Avenue D to get yourself shanked. Yeah, get shanked, see somebody sell a gram, learn a little bit of Spanish or something. Do mm -hmm. it all. You know, they just have a different vibe down there. It's still a little risque. And yeah. that's what I like. You could do, you know, you, you do... You know, there's a lot of the dark arts, basically, brother. I just also want to send a quick shout out, RIP, to the neighborhood crackhead that I grew up with, which is also, see, I would, where I grew up in Ridgewood, Bushwick, it used to be a place where you could get stabbed, but unfortunately now it's all like vegan yeah. cupcake stuff. But there still was the neighborhood crackhead, homeless guy who was, I mean, we thought he was going to die in 1997. He just died recently. Scotty Karate mm -hmm. just passed away, and he was the neighborhood guy. He used to, he would sing a Billy Joel song, and then he would do whatever thing, anything you wanted him to do, he would do for a dollar. Wow. So I remember one time he backflipped into this shards of glass, knocked himself unconscious, and then we just put a dollar on his chest. Or he would do, you know, roofing work. Mm -hmm. He would fix your, anything you give him a dollar, we'd call him Scotty Karate. And he would have no shirt on and sweatpants uh, almost 12 months a year. Damn. So, and he survived for a long time. So just want to say shout out Scotty Karate. Yeah, RIP Scotty. And also, yeah, they had a guy bus and he was mentally challenged or something happened to him. And he was, um, he used to ride a bike, a woman's bike that had like a little baby seat in the back. Mm -hmm. And the baby seat was always empty, you know? Right. And he said he had a little husband that used to, <laughs> and people were always like, damn, where's your little husband at? And so he would always just tell us he had a little bit of, of a, he had like a little husband that used to, he was looking for him or something. And yeah, I don't know what happened to that guy, but. I just, I, it's, it's funny to grow up the way we grew up, like how you grew up in the, like it's very relatable. Like you grew up in the deep South and I grew up in kind of the deep Brooklyn, deep Brooklyn yeah. where it's like, you had your there were just different names but but like like for example like we both have neighborhood crackheads or we both have like crazy uncles like mm -hmm. i have an uncle who somebody robbed my mother um and and then at the local bodega he was used to hang out at the local bodega and i guess they had this robbery ring going out of this bodega where they would steal women's purses and steal their credit cards and their money or whatever whatever and they stole my mom's purse one day on the corner and then a couple of days later, my uncle was in the bodega because he was just chilling, drink beers there. And they were talking about how they just ripped off this lady. And he was like, what she look like? And and my uncle's like, oh, that's my sister-in-law. Mm. You know, he didn't know. Or he said it in his head. That's my sister-in-law. And so whatever, they kept drinking, continuing, drinking, drinking. And then later on that night, my uncle, I didn't know this. I was a little kid. I only found this out a couple of years Killed ago. Killed the guy? No. Nah. What he did was he took, they got drunk. They went back into my uncle's garage, which is in the back backyard of my house. And my uncle beat him up and then tied him up and uh, melted the skin off his knees with a blowtorch Jesus. for stealing my mom's bag. And then he got my mom's, couldn't get the credit cards back, but he got the ca he got cash, the amount of cash that he thought she would have, he got it back. So it's like, that's a crazy uncle. You, I'm sure you have, uh, maybe not that exact story, but a crazy uncle. Yeah, no, we don't, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's a, I think it was just growing up in a different time too and people could do more stuff without right. everybody constantly ratting everybody out and no. Twitter's just a big snitch fest on there, man. It's just so many snitches. <laughs> we got a question that came in from a guy right here. Oh, yeah? Yep. We run it, we good on time? Uh, yep. Theo's got about five. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. And this guy's in a free conch. This is a Crystalia supporter right here. This guy looks a little dirty, but like a nice guy. Yeah, he looks like he probably he's done. I bet he's done chef work or just some UFC. But I like. Him hey, a lot. what's up, Theo? What's up, Chrissy D, baby gorgeous? Hope you guys are doing great. Um, I'm. My name's Nick. I am from Aurora, Illinois. And my question for uh, Chris, actually for both of you, if you both uh, could answer this, it'd be great. Um, but for Chris, I know that you had started a career in physical therapy, and um, I was wondering what was the moment and what made you decide to pursue stand up full time, mm. and what like what was going on. I'm I'm always curious to know like what it was that made you transition into a uh, different career paths like was stand up maybe just a hobby was it always a passion um and how was that for you how, how did that go and for you as well theo like what were you doing when you decided that you were going to do stand up and become a comedian full-time and how was that like for you as well uh it's just something i'm always interested in to know with uh with anyone that pursues something as crazy as stand up so uh thanks guys thank you so much uh, i appreciate it. have a great rest of the day gang gang Gang, bro. Gang. Thank you for Very articulate. Me. I did not expect him to be as articulate and well-spoken and well-mannered uh, and soft, like, in a positive way yeah. as he was. I thought it was going to come out. Because last time I did your podcast, your fans were just coming out swinging. 
saying I want to fight you, fuck you. But really? now it's seen, yeah, because because they were only going off what they had seen of me, and oh, what they had seen of me was you and, and I and ripping Opie. each other ripping from each Opie. Other. But now again, positive because I came on your show and some of your fans start listening to my stuff. I can see they're using calling me baby gorgeous and Chrissy Chlamydia. They listen, they so it's a different it. thing. Yeah, so I, they love I appreciate it. all this. Yeah, look, man, I appreciate. You. I'm glad you, that you're here, dude. The good the good thing Hold about my hands this. While we, while we end all right. This. I don't think yeah. I've, I haven't held a guy's hands like this. Hold on, bro. Don't no, touch come on, the top man. of my hand with you your other phone. You got those fingers, bro. Huh? You got those fucking perfect ass fingers. They're not perfect, dude. I'm very, very, like kind of the hands of the you could barely fucking choke somebody. You have to have somebody else come and help you. Nah, dude. They're fucking good in there. So, and you, you don't bite your nails are, either. My, um, I do. My bu my thumbs are good. You got sexy ass cuticles. Really? I think so. But look at this finger, kind of. Oh, that's, like that that finger is disgusting. That looks like ET. Yeah. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, you actually, your fingers are a little long. Yeah. But I, I mean, like they're fingers, just, though. They shouldn't be real not long. You could just rock your toes, man, with no... I'm dis, My feet are disgusting. They grow over each other. I could easily see that. It's disgusting. Yeah, you, almost, my, you look like somebody who would have webbed feet almost. I don't have webbed yeah. feet, but I believe I was born with broken feet, and they never fixed it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just, I, my feet are broken. <laughs> Take care of yourself, dude, okay? That's what I'm saying. You look like a guy that definitely was in the band, in the school band, even though he wasn't really in it. <laughs> yeah, know? like yeah. I was just there. <laughs> you look like you were on like, the marching thing with the flag. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, you look like my, my third grade gym teacher mrs klein oh, yeah <laughs> she was like this lesbian we used to call her lou kang you kind of look like lou kang from street <laughs> oh, fighter yeah, if he was a white dude and had money <laughs> thanks man <laughs> yeah um that's awesome man. but but oh, um, this, uh, what this should we answer question. his question yeah, let's answer his question okay oh, you, you want to start yeah so uh yeah what was i doing i mean i was always doing something else on the side um until comedy was just enough of a job you know mm -hmm. i think at a certain point it just kind of chooses you i, I always I think even till about like 10 years in, I was like, am I going to keep doing this? Am I going to keep doing this? At some point, I have to grow up, it feels like. Mm -hmm. Comedy for me always felt like a place where I could, es I could just be, I never had to grow up. You get to travel all the time. You get to escape whatever was going on in your regular life. You, had to, you always got to get out of town. If you were a, if about to be in a relationship, I got to go, I got to get out of town. You know, there was always, you were always on the go. You never had to be in one space. You never had to really kind of deal with your with yourself, I guess, in a right. little bit. So comedy always gave me that, the ability to escape, I felt like. And then at a certain point, I was like, oh, I'm getting older. I need to figure out, um, am I going to have, uh, you know, what am I going to do here? How am I going to have mm. a real future? And then, yeah, I think at some point it just kind of chose me. It was like, okay, there's enough here where I can survive, you know, so I'm going to stay. What I always liked about you is you were a guy that you had to really – not that it mattered, but there was a lot of proving that you had to do to your peers because when you started out, it was real world, and then you start doing stand-up, and already people are like, nah, he's a real world guy. He's not a real stand-up. And then your career, like you said, was like just maintaining, 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 did the Netflix special, and it's just maintaining, and then you start to prove yourself in the podcast game. And then they say, oh, well, he's just starting a podcast you know, he's still the real world guy, but then you start to explode with the podcast, and then it got to the point where it was like, now... I've shed that real world thing. I don't think anybody, I know for a fact, no one even thinks about that with you. Anybody like that was something he did 15 years ago. And now it's just like great podcaster, great stand up. It's match. So I don't sometimes as a peer of yours in the comedy world, we, I notice, I'm like, that was pretty insane. How he was able to do all that. The random fan may not know that. They may just be like, oh, I, I've always fucked with Theo, but it's like where you had to come from. Cause you could have easily quit is my point. Cause you say in 10 years, it's like, after, I'm sure you heard it because if I heard it in New York then you heard it, it was like oh it's the real world dude but that's you know we don't want to be known as that like just now am I starting to shed oh you that guy from guy code where it's like that's a part of me that's I'm proud of it but now it's like they know my name a little bit they know my podcast they know me for stand-up not for being a talking head and you are not known for being on a reality show yeah you know so it takes a lot of work to do that so I'm I'm always noticing about you and I think it's dope thanks man but I will say that you're a faggot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude, if I'm a faggot, bro, A, <laughs> no offense if anybody is a faggot or, and and still refers to themselves as that. That's very uh, Are we not allowed to say that word? I apologize. I didn't, I didn't mean to say, say that. I, I said it. So if you want to edit it out. Yeah, and just put quotes under mine and just refer to his. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was Because I was just, I didn't have anything to say. The problem is I, because I said that nice thing about you and I was thinking of a joke and it slipped. So I just went to a very uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a pre immature thing no, and I just, bro, call, and I just said that and I just refer, I have two yeah. gay friends and they say they say look I am a faggot right 
Well, and I'll I'm be s- like, dude, you don't don't say that. And I'll be like, no, I am. That's what I am. Well, so, so everybody does different something different. Some people want, but I'll be the. I'll tell you this, dude. If I'm gay, bro, I would be shocked. See, if I'm gay, I'd be. If I'm gay, I'd be relieved. Yeah, that's I, the thing with me. It's because I can't even really take a good look mm-hmm. because my father's still alive. So my I got an old school father. Oh wow, seventy five year old Brooklyn. You know, Tony Balls is his nickname. So I can't even look inside to see if there's a little gay in there because it feels like there's a little gay in there like like i'm plant-based i'm on a plant-based diet right now and you're built like a strong gay you're built like a strong and i'm a strong gay and people tell me you know i'm a power i'm a i'm a power bottom um i got a big fat ass um (laughs) i love whitney houston Uh, my favorite movie is little women or pretty woman um you know i fucking jerk off to guys like all those things are (laughs) all those all those things are gay. So sometimes I feel like I can say that F word, which is derogatory, and I don't mean any harm by it, but I could say because I know deep down I am one. I yeah. know that there's one just pouncing around in there. Um, oh, yeah. I can okay. see a little tigger inside of you, man. Yeah, because the thing is, even though I did get two pumps, I got skull fucked by the McKenzie <laughs> brothers, two pumps, I did give it a lick as it was coming off. <laughs> so, that's, so that changes everything. <laughs> you know? Bro, that's an alarm if things get too good. <laughs> really? And I think we just hit that, <laughs> yeah. man. My fault, guys. Can I tell <laughs> yeah, you quick bro, how I, why? It sounds I, like the McKenzie brothers' fault. Yeah. Yes. What do you oh, got to say? Real quick. Well, no, just oh, Luke Kang. Um, <laughs> real quick. Um, I started stint just to answer the fans' oh, yes, question. I'm Thank sorry, you for that please, question. Yeah, yeah. I was a f- pediatric physical therapist. I have a doctorate degree in physical therapy. Yeah, sure, it's man. crazy, dude. It really is crazy, man. When you get skull fucked, you, your paths change. <laughs> you know? so, so I went and I became a, a physical therapist. I was working with children, pediatric, mentally and physically handicapped children. It was a beautiful job. But then simultaneously, I got on Guy Code, and Guy Code really started to pop off on MTV2. And then they created Girl Code, and that really started to pop off. So what happened was, see, the thing is this, is you know, they, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the people who were watching the shows were younger people, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It was a college younger people show on MTV and MTV2. And it's very well known that older women sometimes will give birth to a child with a disability. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of testing that women as they get older have to do. It's less and less now, but it's still a thing. That's why people always say, oh, my biological clock. But what's also not as known, but is very true, mm-hmm. is younger women, 17, 16, pre, they don't have the proper prenatal care and they don't know that they're pregnant. So their yeah. children are born with high disability rates as well. Definitely, and high sugar too. They're always at Sonic. Uh, always at Sonic, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, so, so they, so they uh, a lot of the moms and dads of the children I was treating were young people that were watching Guy Code and Girl Code. And the principal of the school I was working at was like, look, we found out you're doing comedy, you're doing these TV shows. And they're like, it's not, you can't be treating handicapped children and also doing a show about the Guy Code to hiding your boner. So you're going to have to choose. Mm. And so it was really this little kid, my little man, Aaron, great kid. He was in a wheelchair, had cerebral palsy. So cognitively, he was fine. No problems with speech or his mind worked like our minds, but his legs didn't work from cerebral palsy. So he was sitting in his wheelchair one day. We were throwing the ball at him. You know, he would throw it at me. I would, you know, rifle it off his legs. He couldn't feel it anyway. So I would just rifle it <laughs> oh, off, you yeah. know, light him with, you know, burn him with cigarettes, oh, whatever it is. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, he couldn't feel shit. I would tell him to close his eyes. I would just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, light his pants no, on yeah, fire, yeah, joke yeah, around. Like, you have, know? A, have a pet bat bite him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm, obviously, I'm kidding. But <laughs> what? He's your agent now? <laughs> yeah, he's my agent. No, so. Aaron. So, um, so Aaron um, told me I was, when I was flirting with this idea of leaving uh, physical therapy, he's six years old. But the thing is, when you're a six-year-old kid that's got a disability, you're, you're so wise beyond your years. Yeah. So the reason, because the you know, man asked me what, why, what made me change, I was always flirting with the idea of leaving for a year. I was like, oh, man, I should leave. I need to jump two feet in if I really want to do stand-up. And then it got to the point where Aaron told me we were talking, throwing the ball back and forth. And, uh, and I was like, ah, I kind of want to leave stand up. I kind of want to leave physical therapy to do stand up, but I'll miss you guys so much. So I don't know if I could do it. And he was like, well, it isn't stand up. Isn't being a comedian your dream. And I said, yeah, it is. And he goes, so why wouldn't you go? Why wouldn't you go do it? If that's what you always want to do. And I was like, um, I was like, I don't know. I'm going to miss you guys. And he was like, he, and he said to me, he was like, I- I'm not going anywhere. I can't walk. I'm always going to be sitting in this chair waiting for you. He's like, but I want to, Aaron said this to me. He goes, I want to, I think it's pretty cool if I could see one of my ther- my teachers, he called, he called his teacher, one of my teachers on TV. He said, I would think that was pretty cool. He said, and if I had that opportunity, I would go and I would hope you would want to watch me and be proud of me. 
And he said, we're all proud of you. I think you should go do it and go live your dream. Damn. And I was like, damn. And then, because I would say, because he, because he said, because I, and then I said to him, I said to him, I was like, how are you so smart? How are you so smart like this? And how are you so brave? And then he said, like, I'll never forget. He was like, well, he was like, you see, Mr. Chris, it was like a fucking movie. Mm -hmm. He's like, you see, Mr. Chris, he said, when you can't walk or use your legs and you're in a wheelchair, he said, you have all day to sit and think. Wow. He said, so I'm thinking about you and I think you should go do it. And then I swear to God, I fucking relieved myself, hysterical crying. Like three hours later, I told the principal, I was like, I'm, I'm going to leave. Is this Patch Adams, I think? No, dude, it was <laughs> legit. It was fucking no, I'm legit. i man. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's wild. I mean, no, it's, uh, fuck. And then I, took that, I had put Chinese finger traps and shit on his toes. I took those off because he couldn't feel it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did he really say the, that, man? I swear he it's really said that. It's remarkable, yeah, to think really about how much time you have to think, just how still probably your world gets when you can't even move. Because it was that that pushed me out. Also, I, this is true, too. I had sex with four of the teachers at different times, and the heat was starting to get turned up because they all <laughs> found out about it. So they were starting to get a little heated in that physical therapy Chrissy room. Chrissy Petrie did with that drip drop, So too, between man. Aaron telling me to go live oh, my dream wow. and, and these girls you know, about to press charges, it was, it was time to leave. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Praise check God, out. man! You can check him out on History of Hyenas, man. Check me out on HistoryHyenas dot com, uh, and you can see but, him and Don this weekend. Where are you guys going to be at? No, well, I don't, Donnie, where are you going to be? I'm going to be in Jacksonville this weekend. Well, you can see him at the Jacksonville the uh, Comedy Zone. When does this episode come out, Theo? Thursday, Thursday, Thur this Thursday. Okay, so if you go to my website, ChristyComedy.com. I got a bunch of dates up there. March nineteenth, uh, Gramercy Theater, Live History Hyenas. First show sold out. Second show available, and then wow. April 29th Wall Street Theater, Norwalk, Connecticut. I also, in April, I have Vancouver, Boston, Raleigh, North Carolina. I got Philadelphia. I just put Seattle and Portland up in October. Uh, Aladdin Theater and Neptune Theater. Amen. So come check me out. I got a bunch of dates. ChrisDComedy.com and check out the podcast, History of Hyenas with Giannis Pappas. Amen, man. And thank you so much for coming, dude. And sorry if I'm a little bit tired. It's just been hard. I just feel tired. No, I hope bro. it was a good episode, man. I think it was a lot of fun. I wish I could be more fun, uh, like just more engaging. Sometimes I'm just a little bit exhausted. I like your energy. I like I like your energy this way because I like it because it's really you. It's really just like you. And then I like in the beginning, like when you get like a little catty bitch energy, I kind of like that about you. Oh, thanks. Man. When I was like talking to you like, hey, save it for the podcast. I kind of like that. And then and then I like that you go in waves and zones with this thing. Yeah, well, I have to pee too. That's why I've fucking been in that zone for a Dude. bit. But I love the story about the kid in the wheelchair. I loved the fact that he inspired you, man, that shit is pretty powerful. You, you got know? you got real good fucking positive energy, and I wish that we hung out more. But I text you, you don't text back anymore. I That's will. That's the problem. Well, I will. Some I'm of my start texts haven't been going you. through. I want to start FaceTiming you more, too. When you pee, is what? it clear or is it darker? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you this, bro. I bet it's a lot clearer than some of the patches you've had, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. That is for sure, dude. Yeah, man. But, I, but I've been, but I'm, I'm just waiting for these last STD <laughs> yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to be celibate, man. I'm going to try to take two months off. No pussy. I'm not saying I won't fuck guys, but definitely no girls. <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you're only banging guys because you're taking a break from women, that's not gay, bro. You have to actually be a gay man, man. So. I know. I feel like guys can't go back. You can't be a bisexual guy. You can be a bisexual girl. But guys, I feel like once you uh, hook up with a guy, you're gay. Yeah. Which is fine. Dunkin' Donuts, remember that? Dunkin' Donuts? No, what's that? From uh, Jim Norton over there on the Opie Show. I love Jim Norton. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Dude, it got weird though towards the end because Opie and Jim were always arguing. Right? They were arguing a lot. There was a lot of tension in there. Uh, and to be honest, man, people would hit me up because at, at the end I was on. Uh, at the end, literally every time Jim was out, Opie would call me in to be the fill in because I was, you know, uh, yeah. hungry. I live right there, hungry for this for the opportunity. Um, and uh, and so a lot of fans would ask me questions. Hey, what's going on with Opie and Jim? And and the truth is, I didn't know because. They, I they only saw them argue once, and that was live on the air when everybody else saw it. Yeah. When it was before, after, I had no idea. I would see Jim at the Comedy Cellar, wouldn't talk about it. I When I would speak to Opie privately, he wouldn't talk about it. So anything that the fans, I don't know. Yeah, you same. Know? Yeah, same. People would ask me about it. I just felt like, I think it's hard to work with anybody for a long time to yeah. start that early in the morning. Yeah. You know, Opie'd been there for a while. I think it's just tough to make that, it's tough to make things fit, you know, a lot of things. But anyway, I shouldn't have brought that up. I didn't mean to kind of bring it up. I just tonight uh oh, you can't do it i probably can actually you want to do it me you and donnie yeah and scotty banks i just have to go i have I to wanna... go to yoga right now no but i mean after yoga yeah we're gonna do it man i want to buy you. what What do you want to eat i don't know something italian you want to do something italian yeah scotty bangs are you you need it you getting a trim oh yeah i actually i got podcast Nick. tonight yeah, oh sorry podcast. he has it's a podcast too 
I'd be honored to. Another you. Bachelor podcast. No, I know oh, his thanks, name's so Nick, me. but aren't we calling him Scotty Bangs, or do we call him Nicky Bangs? Nicky Bangs. Oh, my fault. Yep. Scotty um, Karate, Nicky Bangs. That's all right, dude. It's so good. I don't even know why I am right <laughs> Yo, dude, you want to piss in my hood? <laughs> no, I want to go, <laughs> go take a nap. <laughs> Yo, dude. All right, bro. I'm going to fucking kiss you on the lips right now. What? <laughs> Get it on camera. No, what are we doing? Can I do it? No. Come on, man. Stop being huh? anti-gay. Just I'm go. Not. Just go. Get him. Dude, if I'm gay, I will tell you, bro. I'm not just being gay for no reason, <laughs> man. Yeah. Thank God. These are these are uh these are man <laughs> man on man for man. Bro. Wow. It's too much. Wow. It's too much, guys. Be good. No, get that away. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself unwind.